Good morning, saints. Good morning. Welcome to the presence of the Most High God. Aren't we blessed to be children of the Most High? And Daddy is always waiting, always happy to see his babies. And I'm number one, number one baby is here. <laughs> Welcome to the presence of the Lord. Yes, it's good to know Jesus. It's the best thing that anybody can ever want to, to have, to be. Knowing Jesus is the greatest thing that can happen to us. So welcome into his presence. And may his presence lead us and guide us and protect us and build us up. In his presence is fullness of joy. Total shalom. With nothing broken, nothing missing. He is God and we are happy to be his children. Okay? To start today's message, please go with me to the book of Psalms. Psalm 45. Psalm 45. And I will read verses 12 to 15 so that we can pray. This psalm is called a song of love. It's a contemplation of the songs of Korah. A song of love. Psalm 45. And it reads... From verse 12 to verse 15. We want to read this and you read and pray. And the daughter of Tyre will come with a gift. The rich among the people will seek your favor. The royal daughter is all glorious within the palace. Her clothing is woven with gold. She shall be brought to the king in robes of many colors. The virgins, her companions, who follow her, shall be brought to you. With gladness and rejoicing, they shall be brought. They shall enter the king's palace. Is that not awesome? We are entering the king's palace, rejoicing. With gladness and rejoicing, they shall be brought. They shall enter the king's palace. And it, it says that the royal daughter is all glorious. Are we not all glorious this morning? It's so beautiful. Her clothing is woven with gold. You can see that this is a, a real song of love. It's beauty. The verse 1 says, my heart is overflowing with a good theme. So you, you, you can see the love. You can see the excitement. And this is what we are supposed to be in the presence of the Lord. And we are entering into the king's presence. If you read verse 14, she shall be brought to the king. Verse 14, she shall be brought to the king in robes of many colors. You remember who had, who's, who, who had the robe of many colors? Joseph, because Jacob loved him more than any other of, of his children. But the good thing is that God doesn't, doesn't have favorites. He loves us all equally. So we all have a coat of many colors. Marco Sarata, so exciting. The virgins, her companion, who follow her, shall be brought to you. So we are all going in a joyful uh, um, trunk or, you know, we are all joyfully going into the presence of the king, entering into the presence of of the king this beautiful Sunday morning. So, you know, today being 3rd of July, the first Sunday in July, I want us to start to speak beauty and love into our lives this month. It's a, it's a song of love. It's a, it's a new, brand new month. It's, it's summertime. Everything is beautiful, so we have to claim that beauty and love into our lives this month. Do not start the month and just carry it on like any other month. 
Remember, God created times and seasons. So this is our time to decree a thing and they will come to pass. If we speak according to the will of God, then his word will work out those wonders, will work out his plan when we agree with him. His word he, he settles. He has given us his word. So we have to speak his word. Let us pray for the goodness of God to be our portion in this new month. Let us pray that love and peace and beauty, goodness, will be our portion, just as we are reading about these royal daughters. Remember, we are royalties in the ministry of the living Jesus. We are royalties, the royal building block, the living stones that God wants to use in this season to do something new, something fresh, something extraordinary in our generation. Her clothing is woven with gold. So you are royalty. You must have that identity. You must know that identity. And you shall be brought to the king in robes of many colors. And with gladness and rejoicing, we are being brought. We enter into the king's palace. Shall we pray in Jesus' name? Santa Ramasha. Marco Sarata. Escalama Sanctum. Aziba Arigaroda Azakata Chelelakai 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 Kandiaribo Marco Sarata Father, we come to you this morning by the power of your Holy Spirit in the matchless name of Jesus. Father, we thank you for this new month. Today is Sunday, 3rd of July, and we just want to commit this new month into your hands that you would take us where you want us that you would lead us where you want us. We have prayed through the month of June that you would lead us into our destiny. Lord, we say, let the fulfillment, Marco Sarata, Escalama Santo, let the fulfillment of those 30 days prayer be seen in our life. Let there be a working out of your will in our life. Let people start to see the signs, the answers of our 30 days midnight prayers in June in the matchless name of Jesus. Father, only you can do it. Only you can do it. And so we commit our lives into your hands. And that's why we are entering into your presence this new month with joy, dressed in royal robes, dressed in a robe of many colors, Entering with joy in, and gladness into your presence. Father, and we say thank you. Thank you for welcoming us. Thank you for allowing us. Thank you that you made everything ready for us to be joyful in this new month. You prepared everything ahead of time for us to, to be fruitful in this new month. That we step into your perfect will for us. So, Lord, we ask for open doors beyond imagination. Open doors, love, favor, beauty, everywhere we go, no matter what is happening around the world, Father, let our portion be in, in your hands. Let you, you are our portion, the portion of our inheritance. Let everything we do come from you so that all the honor, all the glory, all the adoration will be yours. And when we walk in obedience, we will walk in the reward and the beauty of who you are. We bless your name. We honor you. We worship you. We glorify you. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Jesus. Wow. Thank you, Lord. It's a beautiful month. So, to continue with our message of today, please go with me. Let us continue with the story of love in the book called Songs of Solomon or Songs of Songs. So, carry on from your... I know many people don't read that book. 
after Psalms, you have the Proverbs and the Ecclesiastes, and then you have the Songs of Solomon. Songs of Solomon. And we want to read chapter 2. Songs of Solomon, chapter 2. And I will read from verse 1 to verse 7. The Song of Solomon, chapter 2, from verse 1 to verse 7. And it reads, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. Like a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. Like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. I sat down in his shed with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. He brought me to the banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. Sustain me with cakes of resins. Refresh me with apples, for I am lovesick. His left hand is under my head, and his right hand embraces me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or by the does of the field, do not stay up nor awaken love until it pleases. Father, we thank you for your everlasting word. We thank you, word of God, for coming to us today. We thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, because you are going to reveal to us what the Father is speaking in his word to us this morning. We honor you. We worship you. We are all ears. Speak, Lord. For your servants are listening. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. The title of our message of today is My Beloved is Mine. My Beloved is Mine. July is our month of love. July is our month of love in many cases, so I would like to share a bit of the vision so that we all know what we are buying into, so to say. You know what you're, you're investing in. And that's why when, when you look at that um, Songs of Solomon chapter 2, verse 4, you, say he, you see that he says, He brought me to the banqueting house. We, you know, God called us into his business and his banner over me was love. So what do you see here on the logo? The banner over our logo, the ministry of the living Jesus is love. So this is our identity. When I say we are royalties, I, I hope now you get it because I need you to know what you are part of. I need you to decide because every family has traits. Every family has characteristics. And our characteristics in the ministry of the living Jesus is love. That is our mandate. That is our key. That is our calling. And you can see from what we read in, in um, Psalm 45, it's all about love. And, it, and here in Songs of Solomon 2 is all about love. It's a song of love. Talking about our beloved. Jesus is our beloved. We are his bride. You cannot go about, you know, around that. And he has called us to walk in love. So love is the banner that that is over us. Love is what we walk in. Because I say it all the time that I need 
to remind us. Love is our mandate in the ministry of the living Jesus. That, that was the calling. That's why you see it there. When, when, you know, when I received the calling, that was the revelation. So you have to know what you are part of. You have to know what, the, 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 what your family's characteristics are. So that when you want to become part of the ministry of the living Jesus, you know what you are part of. So it's a bit of sharing the vision. So we want to speak love into our life because this is, you know, when when this all started in July, okay? So it all started in July, a long time ago. <laughs> so that God would help us to fulfill his mandate for his church. And we know that God is all about love. You know, different churches have different callings. Some preach faith, some preach uh, hope, some preach, you know, whatever. But, you know, this is, we have to walk in love. The, it is love that conquers everything. It is love that, I mean, that is our mandate. So uh, I, as we go on, I will, I will lead us into you know, different things. The bride of Christ must know love. You cannot be a bride without love. I know people marry in the world for different reasons, but the whole purpose about bride and groom <laughs> was always love. The bride of Christ must walk in love. The bride of Christ must know love. The bride of Christ must put on love, like just as it's the, the banner over us is love, as it says there in, in Songs of Solomon 2. Um, in our 21st century Christianity, the bride of Christ is truly a lily among thorns, like we see there in verse 2. Because the world doesn't understand why we do what we do. So let's look at that verse 2. Um, or let me starting in verse 1. I am, so Song of Solomon 2 verse 1, I am the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valleys. Like a lily among thorns, so is my love among the daughters. What is the word of God saying to us in this 21st century? You are, as the body of Christ, as the bride of Christ, as the believer of Christ, it is like, you know, you are being attacked from all angles. You see, so you are like that lily among thorns. But should that bother you? No, that shouldn't bother you. The world wants to squash you out. The world wants to squash out the church. The world wants to squash out the love of Christ. That's why we are like a lily among thorns. So we have to keep our beauty. You have to keep your beauty because Jesus himself will build his church. The Bible says that the wheat and the tear must grow together. The, the sheep and the goat must grow together. But the day will come when there will be a sorting out. It will all be sorted out. So don't allow the thorns to stop you from growing. Imagine when you drive on the highway, all concrete. Once in a while, you see something green grow out from some crack in those in, in, in those concrete. How do they manage? How, how do they survive? God keeps them. God gives them life. So I don't want you to think, oh, I'm all alone. Uh, I have no helper like um, Elijah said. After, you know, after he, he fought the prophets of Baal and went to God, and God said, what are you doing here? He said, you see, I'm the only one zealous for you. Every other person is worshiping false gods. God said, no, no, no. I've reserved 7,000 who have not kissed Baal. So that is you. That is I. We are the remnant. We are the few that have been reserved for a time like this. For this era, this generation, that people don't want to know about purity or holiness or righteousness 
They just want to do what their fleshy body feels like. And of course, that's wrong. You can't always do what you feel like. That's why there are rules and regulations about everything. So, and to do what is right also brings reward. If you do what you feel like, it can be anything. So don't also complain when you get the wrong results. So let us understand that even though it feels for us Christians, the few that actually call themselves Christians and want to live Christ-like lives, yes, you will feel like lily among thorns. But don't forget, your protection is, is tight. God is the one, God understands the rough surroundings that you are in. And he says, don't worry, just grow. Because the day will come when I will do a perfect sorting. If you try to, to squeeze yourself out, you might hurt yourself. Just stay there. Keep glowing. Keep, you know, put, put on those garments of gold like, like we read in Psalm 45 just now. Always behold your king. Behold your king. Stay, I mean, stay on your post. Stay focused. The world will be the world. People will be people. You cannot live their lives. If you have a life in Christ, live your Christ-like life. Don't try to be like. Don't try to copy the world. Don't try to be a thorn when God created you to be a lily. <laughs> he who has ears, let him hear that one. Do not try to be a thorn when God created you to be the lily. You are the lily of the valleys. When people want something that smells sweet, it's you they will come to. What happens when people want to pick up flowers? They cut off the thorns to reach to the beautiful flower that they want. So don't even rose, even the rose plant that is so beautiful and and, and smelling nice. What does it have on the, on the stem? Thorns. And for you to hold it comfortably, you, you trim off the thorns. Don't worry, the thorns will be trimmed off. You just remain your beautiful self. You just remain your, your sweet-smelling self. Enjoy who you are in Christ. We are the bride of Christ. We are the living Jesus. It is a privilege to be royal building blocks in the house of your God. Jesus himself says, he will build his church and the gates of hell shall never prevail against it. Shall we look at that shortly in Matthew chapter 16? Matthew 16. Keep your mind sweet. Today we are talking about love. Matthew chapter 16. I will just read from verse 18 to 19, but my focus in, is on 18 and 19. Matthew 16 from verse 13, 1, 3. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? So they said, Some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you say that I am? Do you know me as my disciples, or you? do you know me as the world knows me? Do you know me? Who do you? If other people call me that, you, my beloved, what do you call me? Who am I to you? What relationship do we have? And it was Simon Peter, the blessed, the beloved. <laughs> Verse 16, Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Revelation. That's Christianity. He did not go to school to hear that. That's what I keep telling you. Verse 17, Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, 
for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. You see, flesh and you the flesh and blood cannot teach you the Bible. Your mind can never teach you the Bible. The Holy Spirit is your teacher, and He sees your heart. When your heart is longing, He will come with His light and shine His light on the Word. And that's when the word starts to make sense. If you like, read the book page, you know, from cover to cover. Study it. Get a PhD with it. It's still rubbish. It's still, I'm talking about getting a PhD in the, you know, in theology. Without the Holy Spirit, it's still rubbish. Take it from me. And I, 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 I love you. That's why I'm telling you that. <laughs> because it's the truth. Here is Peter. Everybody was saying, Jesus is this, Jesus is that. Peter, by re divine revelation, declared, you are the Christ. How did he know? No, flesh and blood could not have told him that. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. Blessed are you, Simon, by Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my father who is in heaven. Where I'm going? Verse 18, and I also say to you, apart from releasing my blessing on you, because he said, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, and I also say to you that you are Peter. See, he just called him Simon, but immediately, because Peter and that, that, uh, uh, um, promotion kind of Pete, Peter Peter's heart sought into the spirit realm and he received something from the spirit immediately he was promoted that's why you cannot compare my promotion to your promotion <laughs> sorry but it doesn't work that's why people don't understand Christians you how are you going to understand it's not normal is this fisherman illiterate fisherman it's not normal. Immediately, Jesus, Jesus in one verse calls him Simon. In the next verse, he says, and I also say to you that you are Peter. Instant promotion. And on this rock, I will build my church. And the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. Verse 19. And I will give you the keys, Marco Sarata. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Instant promotion from earth to heaven. I mean, are you getting it? I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. This is somebody who, who hardly knew his right from left. And now he's, he's been promoted to heaven. That is Christianity. Open your heart and receive your keys today. I'll give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And what, oh, Yagada. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Authority on both realms. Whatever, no limit. That's why I'm saying, please, people, you are royalty. Stop limiting yourself. Stop limiting yourself. And please, most of all, don't limit your God. Even if you don't get it, tell him, Lord, just do, just do what you want. Look at Peter. Was he expecting this? No, from zero to hundred and beyond. I'm giving you the keys. Not one key, keys. So that whatever you bind here on earth, whatever you declare here on earth, heaven says yes. And whatever you lose here on earth, same will happen in heaven. Instant authority in both realms. Just for keying into that divine revelation. When others are talking, don't follow them and talk. Keep quiet long enough and listen. What am I hearing? When you hear it, then declare it. 
The world is too loud. Find time. That's why Jesus says, when you want to pray, look for a quiet corner. Go into your closet if, the, if your house is too loud. Find a quiet place. The world wants to be loud. Don't let them rob you of your promotion. Insta. Keys to open doors in heaven and on earth. And we are here playing games, saying we are doing religion. What religion? Does that sound that, like religion to you? Does that sound like religion to you? No, I don't do religion. This should encourage the church. This, this should be our encouragement today. I know there are loads of encouragement in the Bible, but like I said, the Lord gives us our daily bread. Let this be your nugget for today. Let this be your word of encouragement as we march on in love in this month of July. Love never fails. God is love and God only functions in love. And love, his kind of love is reckless. <laughs> he, look, at what he just, look at what just happened to Peter. Reckless love, reckless authority, reckless power. We have this power to rule and reign, and yet we are playing games. Wake up. Half of the year is gone. We are entering into the second half of the year. Whatever we missed from January till June, May God give us the grace to pick it up from July before December comes. Amen? So, let's look at 1 Corinthians 13. That is the love, another love chapter in the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, 3. I'll just read it all because it's beautiful. First Corinthians chapter 13. Listen to Apostle Paul's revelation. It's revelation, nothing else. He was a human being like you and I. But he heard, he had the ability to hear from the spirit. That's why I'm saying when people are too loud around you, just carry yourself away and go and look for a quiet place and chill so that you can actually hear. They, these people we are reading about didn't have 10 heads. They had one head like you and I. What they did, you can do double because now in our 21st century, we have more uh, uh, we have more information and history to fall back on all right first corinthians 13 though i speak with the tongues of men and of angels but have not love i have become sounding brass or a clanging cymbal if i don't have love i don't care what i have it is rubbish, it is noisy, it is empty. Verse 2, and though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I, can, I could remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. You see? So when I tell you without Jesus you are nothing, you have your proof there. Why? Because God is love. And without him, you, you haven't even started. You have nothing if you don't have Jesus. Nothing. Zero. Zero. Shall I, shall I spell it? Z-E-R-O. Zero. Wake up. God loves you. That's why you are hearing this. So that you can make a U-turn. Don't play with your eternal life. 
don't play with your life at all whether it's now or or later i don't care what you have i don't care what you think you can do or is it verse two and though i have the gift of prophecy you think you have a gift it's a gift are you operating in prophecy for god's honor are you operating in love is the banner over you love is your motivation love is your mandate in life love that is the question today though i have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge and though i have all faith so that i could remove mountains but have not love i am nothing you see he said there listen to the language in that verse he says though i have though i have though i have and he says if i have not love i am nothing you see the difference with with having and being i can have something and yet i am nothing <laughs> God give us understanding. I can have all I want, yet my state of being is still zero. Though I have, without love, love I am nothing. Don't mistake the two. Having is not being. You can have anything. You can have everything, and you still feel empty because you don't have that identity. You are just maybe wearing things or just flinging cash around, but inside you are not who you portray yourself to be. So having something is not being that thing. If you are royalty it should first be your identity before it shows in affluence otherwise it will just be fake that's why people pretend to be things and when you come close to them you see that they are empty let it be the other way around be it and let that being flow out of you what you are will now come out not what you have what you have is nothing it's what you are that protects you okay verse three. and though i bestow all my goods to feed the poor and though I give my body to be burned, but have not love, it profits me nothing. Just the same thing. People just like to show off, but at the end of the day, it's all empty. Oh, I give to the poor, I give to the poor. People give millions to the poor and still go to hell because it's, that's not the issue. Giving to charity doesn't take you to heaven. Is knowing Christ, sharing in his life, death, and, and burial, and resurrection. Knowing him. Who do the people say that I am? Oh, Elijah, oh, Jeremiah, oh, this. But you, you that claim to have a relationship with me, who am I to you? You see, let people outside there talk, but you should know. You should know. Even if you give millions to the poor, it means nothing if you have no Christ-like love in your heart. You can just give and you will still go to hell. May that not be your portion in Jesus' name. Start to ask for revelation. Verse 4. Love suffers long and is kind. So love is long-suffering, patient, and love is kind. Love does not envy. <laughs> so what, when we have 
we benefit each other. We cannot envy each other. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. No, love wants to help, not show off. It is not puffed up. Does not behave rudely. Does not seek its own. Is not provoked. Thinks no evil. Verse 6, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. That's why I say when it's not because you are a Christian, it, it means that uh, you have a, a, a war, you know, like a, the, you'll never have any issue in life. No, the point is that those issues, you will float over them. They won't swallow you. The fire will not burn you. The flood will not, you know, drown you. You will be in control. You can speak peace into situations. A thousand may fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand. Only with your eyes shall you behold and see the reward of the wicked. It's not because things will not happen. But God will empower you. That's why as a lily among thorns, you are still beautiful. You are still sweet smelling. So you don't allow the difficulties in this world. The world, this world is sinful. This world is broken. This world is fallen. So what do you expect from a, a fallen and broken world? You have to expect rubbish. But this is not our end. And that's why Jesus says you are in the world, but you don't belong there. So don't count yourself as part of this world. You are a citizen of heaven. That's why you are royalty. You are a citizen of the kingdom of God. And today you have learned that you have the keys. So just go, <laughs> go open any door you want. You don't belong here. So 1 Corinthians 13 verse 8. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Your talent will fail you so quickly. I keep saying it. Because it, it makes you all puffed up. When push comes to shove, you realize that all those things you have, you'll be so weak you can't hold on to them. But when you are those things, that means that's you. That's you. You carry it. You don't, you don't need to hold it. That's who you are. It's not up here. It's the whole being. Who I am. Love never fails. But whether there are prophecies, they will fail. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. <laughs> Everything in this world is based on time. They will all come to pass. Don't put your life on them. Whether there are tongues, they will cease. Whether there is knowledge, it will vanish away. When, when you are faced with trouble, you won't even know what hits you and you, you give up. But if it is you, then it's you. Whether you're in heaven or hell, it doesn't matter. That's who you are. Verse 9. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect has come, then that which is in part will be done away. That's why Jesus says heaven and earth will pass away. But my word will never pass. It's, it's settled. It's settled. This is what we should hold on to. Not even one dot will pass away without being fulfilled. But all that we see with our physical eyes, one day, poof, like in the days of Noah, all gone. You didn't put it there, so you have no control over it. <laughs> You did not bring anything to this world. Everything you, you deal with in this world, you found it here. So because you didn't bring it, you will leave it and go. You did not bring anything into this world. You cannot take anything away. It's not yours. 
somebody just gave you his thing to enjoy for a while. So the day you leave, you leave it for another. Get it, get it, get it. It's not yours. You are only a caretaker for a time. So if you love yourself, take care of it well and enjoy it well because the day will come. You will leave it alone and another person will carry on. It's not yours. Only who you are matters, not what you have. It's not yours. <laughs> That's why you see when people die, they just go live. Everything is Forget it. You, you can hold on to nothing. It's not yours in the first place. <laughs> I think I'm busting people's bubbles now. We have to know the truth. There. Verse, verse 6 says, Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. If you can't start to rejoice in truth, that means you have no love. There, read it for yourself in verse 6. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. Now let's go down again to verse um, 11. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. So that's why I'm saying it's not wrong to, to be mistaken here and there. Nobody will fault you for it. But the point is, grow up. Don't just remain there. Learn and grow. Learn and grow. Learn and grow. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. That's normal. I understood as a child. That's good. I thought as a child, perfect, but, but when I became a man, I had to put away childish things. When will you grow up? Learn and grow. Learn truth. Don't just do what others do and waste your time on earth. Build yourself up because what you have has no value. What you are is the valuable thing. When I became a man, I had to put away childish things. Verse 12, for now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. You see, everything in this world is concealed to some extent. People think they know. No, you only discover at your level. You grow. You discover, you grow. You discover, you grow. So we see dimly. But then the day will come when we will see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. Revelation. When you have Jesus face to face. He, his light shines on you and reveals you to you. And the more you know yourself and you love him, the more you can step into him. Because the Father's will is that all of us should look like Jesus. He is the only beloved. Oh, my beloved is mine. What a privilege. I read verse 12 again. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then the time will come when we will see face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall know just as I also am known. The way Jesus knows me, one day I will know him better. Verse 13. And now abide faith, hope, love. These three, but the greatest of these is love. And that is what we have in the ministry of the living Jesus. Love is our banner. Love is our mandate. Love is our key. The key that we use in both realms to open doors. Whatever we open is open with love. Whatever we close is closed with love. 
we cannot deal outside of love. Now abide faith, hope, love, these three. But the greatest of these is love. Is that not a privilege to be belong to the ministry of the living Jesus? Is it not a privilege to be royalty with a banner of love over you? It is a privilege. It is a privilege. So it doesn't matter whether we are lily, uh, we are, we are lily among thorns, but we still have to grow. The lily must grow strong. The lily must know what, you know, the privilege of being the lily. So I'll just recap that, that quickly. Love is the key that Jesus has given to the ministry of the living Jesus. Every household has its own characteristics and traits of identity. That's why you can spot children in a group. And, and when you are looking, you can say, oh, that child belongs to that man or that woman. You can see it. So we must look like our father. And because of that, when we operate in the love of God, we are walking in our identity. Because this is our identity. Like a lily among thorns, God has prepared us to grow in this generation. You are not in the wrong place. You know, life is not too difficult because he, he put everything in you to survive what, you know, to survive your surroundings, to survive your, your environment, to be able to, to grow within that environment. You know, we survive because his banner over us is love. And love never fails. Love never fails. He will sustain us with his goodness. He will sustain us with his divine covering. And uh, uh, he, will, he will protect us and, and, and provide for us within, you know, even if you think, oh, but the soil is too dry. Something still grows. Even in the de desert, God causes things to grow even in the desert. So let us not look at what is happening around the world and give up on ourselves. No, don't do that. Don't give up on yourself because God has never given up and will never give up on you. So let's look at Songs of Solomon chapter 2 again. From verse, um, verse 3. It says, Like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. So you stand out. I sat down in his shed with great delight, and his fruit was sweet to my taste. So God is lifting you up to, to that place that you need to be. God is lifting you. God, God prov provides sweetness in your life. Why did we pray the whole of June? For, for God to show us our destiny is because he has prepared a perfect destiny for you. But if you, if you put your eye around what is physically going on, you will miss. You will miss your destiny. So don't do that. I sat down in his shed with great delight. And wherever you are in life, if you have given your life to Jesus, be always joyful. Always be joyful. In his presence is fullness of joy. And his fruit was sweet to my taste. You know, God is sweet. God is perfect. God is good. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Verse 4. He brought me to the banqueting house. So you are always celebrating. <laughs> if people don't get true Christians. Oh, but this and this just have. Don't you care that we are perishing? Jesus is like, who is perishing where? I'm in charge. <laughs> Remember the story in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 4, when Jesus says, let's cross over to the other side. And the devil is trying to, 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 to stop the, the plan of the Father. Jesus had to go and set the, 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 the man bound in, you know, with the uh, uh, legion. Jesus had 
the word from the Father. That, that person needs deliverance today. And Jesus told his disciples, let's cross over. And him being the prince of peace himself, he went and found the pillow, put it down, and just slept very, very comfortably on a pillow. He didn't just lean back and say, oh, let me just rest. Again. No, no, no. He chose peace because he is peace. When the Bible says something, hold on to it. And then the devil, knowing that some, you know, his captive was going to be taken from him, he caused a storm. And then the, the disciples, not discerning, came to Jesus. Master, master, don't you care that we are perishing? Perishing where? Perishing where? And he just stood up and rebuked the wind. And then the disciples were like, who is this? We've seen men, but we've not seen this type of man. You see? So in his presence is different. He brought me to the banqueting house. In his presence, you will always rejoice. And his banner over me was love. Verse 5. Sustain me with cakes of resins. Refresh me with apples, for I am lovesick. Without you, I'm empty. Without you, I am dry. Without you, I'm, I'm exhausted. I don't even know what to do, my love. My beloved is mine. And without his presence, I am empty. Sustain me. Only God can sustain you. Only God can give you what you want. All this chasing after the wind is nonsense. Find him. Stop being Simon. Start to become Peter. Rest in him so that you can open doors that you never thought possible. He is the one who is handing over the keys. It's not by might or power. It's by my spirit, says the Lord. It's really, it's really not in human effort. Sustain me with cakes of resins. Refresh me with apples, for I am lovesick. I am empty without you. I miss your presence. If I, if I don't have communion with you, Lord, I miss it. Don't let me go out without you. Don't let me come in without you. Don't let me think of doing anything without you. Where am I going to get the strength from? Where am I going to get the wisdom from? It will only be struggle, struggle, struggle. Who wants that? That's why there has to be revelation. And that's why we have to pursue it. Verse 6. His left hand is under my head and his right hand embraces me. That is protection. That is that lily among thorns, but that lily is protected. He covers your head in battle. He, he shields you. His arm he is not only over you, his left hand is under my head, he shields you, and then he embraces you. Divine protection all around. And he says, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or by the does of the field. Do not stay up nor awaken love until it pleases. When you have found your love in Christ, nobody will tell you, to pursue that love. Nobody will tell you to, to, to make sure that you don't miss on that love. You don't miss your appointment with Jesus at any time. You keep, you, 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 you wake up to it, you sleep with it, you drink it, you eat it. But be ready for it because it's, it's, it's an adventure. It's an adventure. And it is an, it's an adventure that we, we will all enjoy. Let us uh, look shortly at Mark, uh, Matthew chapter 5. Because we are talking about love here. And a lot of people don't understand. They think... We are talking about Hollywood love. No, we are not talking about Hollywood love. That one is acting. <laughs> that is acting. 
It is only a show. It's not real. Don't copy it. Don't copy. We want to love people who love us. But listen to what Jesus is saying here. Matthew chapter 5 verse 44. But I say to you, love your enemies. What, Jesus? But he hurt me. But he said bad things about me. Jesus is like, just obey me and do it my way and, you, and wait and see the results. <laughs> oh, his ways are not our ways. But I say to you, love your... If you read from verse 43, let me just take you back a little bit. He says, you have heard in the world they say... You shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Jesus says, no, no, no. I'm saying to you, love your enemies. Bless those who curse you. Do good to those who hate you. And pray for those who spitefully use you and persecute you. You see? Complete opposite of what we are told and taught to do. And this is the only way that you may be sons of your father in heaven. For he makes his son, S-U-N, rise on the evil and on the good. And sends rain on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those who love you, what reward have you? You are just doing like they are doing. There is nothing special. Do not even the tax collectors do the same. Sinners, you know, do the same. They have their bodies. They have their, their people, you know, people they deal with. So just because you, you love somebody doesn't mean that it's a godly love. Godly love is unconditional. It's unconditional. So let us not love like the world. Let us love like God. So let's go back to, I just wanted to point that out so that we we know where we are in this love affair. We love people who don't love us because we have a love that is supernaturally sustained. You don't love like the world. You love like the Lord. <laughs> okay. Verse 8 and 9 of Songs of Solomon. The voice of my beloved, be, uh, behold, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, skipping on the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young stag. Behold, he stands behind our wall. He is looking through the window, gazing through the lattice. And he says in verse 10, my beloved spoke and says to me, rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. See, God is always wooing us, always calling us, always wanting us to come away with him. Don't sit around and waste your time. I'm taking you places that you would never have dreamt of. I'm taking you places you would never imagine. Come away with me, my love. Let me show you things. That's exactly what he, he, he did to Abraham. Leave your people. Come out. Let them stay there and worship idols. I want to show you. I can see your heart. That you are seeking truth. I'm going to make you a blessing. Because of you the whole world will be blessed. And look at where we are today. Come away my love. Let me take you places. Verse 11. Songs of Solomon 2. For lo the winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth. The time of singing has come. And the voice of the turtle dove is heard in our land the fig tree puts forth her green figs and the vines with the tender grapes give a good smell rise up my love my fair one and come away see wooing 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 we are his beloved he is our beloved he wants us to be in close face to face close up relationship with him like we read uh, earlier in, in 
1 Corinthians 13. Face to face. You want to know him face to face. The, the time is gone when you were like a child. Now you want to grow up. Grow up in this relationship. Children don't get married. Adults get married. Jesus calls you his bride. So he wants you to be a grown up. Have that face to face, close up, one on one, special rela relationship with your Jesus. Verse 14. Oh, my dove, in the clefts of the rock, in the secret places of the cliff, let me see your face. Let me hear your voice for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely it's so beautiful when you sit down to read this with understanding it's god is all over you in love he's he's singing all these love songs over you telling you how beautiful you are you know telling you how awesome you are telling you all the things you can do giving you keys to enter places you wouldn't even have dreamt of all he does is to show you my love for you is limitless it, i don't it's not because of what you've done i loved you already i only want you to recognize it that's why apostle paul says when I was a child, I was stupid. I didn't know it. Now I know it. And I'm pursuing him. I want to know him more. That is the, the, the heart of a Christian. Let me see your face, Lord. Let me hear your voice, Lord. Because your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. What else can you want? When you have him, you have everything. Verse 15, and don't forget when you have everything, the enemy is jealous. That's why you say, catch all the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. Cast that evil out of your, of your life. Cast those things that don't honor Jesus out of your life. Catch those little foxes that come to spoil the sweetness of, uh, uh, of, of your 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 relationship with Jesus. Don't tolerate them. They are not there to do you good. Cast them out. Cast the devil out of your life. He's not there to, to help you in any shape or in any form. And and God will send his angels to, you know, don't, don't forget God God is always, uh, um, God is so, so tender-hearted, so loving, so merciful. He will send you help when you cry out for help. Verse 16. My beloved is mine. That's our title. My beloved is mine. And I am his. There's nothing that can change that in all history. He feeds his flock among the lilies. Verse 17. Until the day breaks and the shadow flee away. Turn, my beloved. And be like a gazelle or a young stag upon the mountains of Beta. Nothing can change the love of God for us. My beloved is mine and I am, I am his. He is the one who feeds me. He's the one who cares for me. And, and uh, to conclude, let's go to Romans. The book of Romans chapter 8. That's why you need to, to always put the Bible together because it says the same thing. If you don't understand it here, another place will help you understand. God is so kind. He thought of it. He thought, he knew your needs. He knew your limitations. So he put all these things there. Romans 8, I will just read from verse 31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Be a lily among thorns. It doesn't matter. God is for you. Nothing can be against you. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely, 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 freely give us all things? He has given you the keys to heaven and earth. You can open the doors. Whatever you open is open. Whatever you shut is shut. 
he has given you freedom. How shall he not also freely, freely give us all things? Did Peter ask for the keys? No. Oh, God, help us to have understanding. He had revelation. That's what brought the keys. That's what makes a Christian stand out. It's not about toiling. Let others toil. Peter had revelation of the Christ. That's what brought the keys. In two realms. Here on earth, he had open doors. In heaven, open doors. Revelation of the Christ. Not hard work. <laughs> Not hard work. When you work hard, let it be an enjoyment. I like to work hard, but I enjoy what I'm doing. Freely give you all things. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Touch not my anointed. Do my prophets no harm. Touch me and see what my daddy will do to you. Try it. If that finger that you point will not wither. <laughs> I am my daddy's number one baby, if you didn't know. Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies. You want to count my wrongdoings? Keep on counting. Just go tell my daddy and hear what he will answer you. <laughs> it is God who justifies. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. He died for me. I'm not righteous on my own. It is his righteousness that I have put on. And furthermore, he didn't just die. He's also risen. Others are dead and they are rotten in the graves. Jesus is alive. He didn't just die. He rose. And he, even at the right hand of God, and he also makes intercession for us. You are covered top, bottom, all round because of the love of Christ. The love of God in Christ Jesus. Verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? <laughs> shall tribulation, backbiting, distress, trouble, persecution, famine, nakedness or peril or sword. That's why I'm saying be a lily among thorns. Don't worry. The thorns will be thorns. You just keep your beautiful self. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. Nothing. He loved me and died for me. Because that's how much he cherishes me. For it's written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Verse 37, I just read. Yet in all these things, I don't care what you are going through. You are already a conqueror. Jesus says, you are in this world, but you are not of this world. So be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. Don't worry about what is happening here. I've overcome it all. You are more than conquerors because of him, not because of your stress. Stop stressing. For I'm persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height or depth, nor any other created thing. I don't care who they are. None of it shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And the church says, Amen. Get it, get it, get it. God is bigger than the biggest. I don't care how puffed up they are. 
They can't come near my daddy. His aim is for us to be perfected for eternal life. So the little troubles that you go into here, the, there are little testings to, to purify you, to strengthen you. Don't let that steal the love of God from you. Seek his face. He is your protection at all times. Remember his aim is to perfect you for eternity. It's not for this world. We just read that nothing in this world, nothing created, shall ever be able to, to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. So, I want this to be, <laughs> I already said, the church should say amen. So, this is not, you know, what we go through in this world is not the end of our story but let this be the end of our love story for today okay okay let it let let this be the end of our love story let us just end it here and let us remember to always look up to jesus he has all that we need he is all that we need he is everything that we need in him we are more than conquerors in him we have Nothing missing, nothing broken. He has already perfected all which concerns us. We should just learn to open our eyes to the truth. Focus on the truth. Know the truth. Grab the truth. Walk in truth. Walk in love. For his glory, for our benefit, in Jesus' name. Amen. So I just want us to thank God for his love, his goodness, his perfect plan for us. His grace for us to walk in his love because it's not a given. What we are talking about is not a given. It is because of his love. It is because of his grace. It's because he knows that we couldn't do it on our own. That's why he came to do it for us. So let us pray. Let us pray in Jesus' name. Santaramashe. Marco Sarata. Eskalama Sanctum. Ariga, 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 Roda, Azakata, Chelela Kai, Chelela Kai, Chelela Kai, Kandiaribo, Marco, Sarata, Azibaba, 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 Azakata, Zakata, 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 Asamara. Father, we thank you for reminding us that your banner over us is love. Thank you for reminding of, of our identity here in the ministry of the living Jesus that your love covers us and love never fails love will sustain us lord love will keep us love will strengthen us love will carry us through because love never fails there can be hope there can be peace there can be uh, uh, faith but above all that is love so lord we thank you that here in the ministry of the living jesus we have been privileged to have your banner of love over us, to have your mandate of love. You remind us to walk in love because love conquers all. Love heals. Love uh, uh, binds together. Love uh, 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 takes care of each other. Love doesn't envy. Love is brother's keeper. Father, help us to do it your way, not how we feel, but what you want. We, you have paid the price. We are more than conquerors because you are already a conqueror. And you are there in heaven praying for us. The Holy Spirit is here on earth praying for us. So we can never fail. We were not created to fail. No, you can never fail. We can never fail. So Lord, thank you for making us conquerors and winners all the time. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your perfect plan. Not just here on earth, but in all eternity be glorified in jesus name we pray amen 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 all right let's go into the communion he never stops giving he never stops pouring out on the last supper he poured himself out every drop of blood he gave all up for us.
So let us remember and ask him for that kind of love, his kind of love, so that we can uh, love ourselves and love our neighbors and not just do as if we are here on our own and nothing happens. God is love and he has empowered us with his love. And that is a privilege. Thank you, Jesus. Communion time. What a privilege to be fed by the Most High God. <gasps> Enjoyment. This is banquet. This is our banquet. Heaven's food. The body of Christ himself. His blood to sustain us. To sustain us. Not just like with resins and sweet apples. No. Jesus is your life. He has given us himself so that we can live. To grow and to know him in all eternity. So on that last, uh, you know, the last uh, Passover that he had with his disciples. They thought it was just another Passover, but he knew it. So he arranged for them to have it in a special place. He, he, there was a rich man who had a big room. And he sent his disciples, go tell the man of the house that the Lord needs his best room <laughs> you are the best banquet banquet understand your identity royalty do not take second best no always the best the the best only the best is good enough for more only the best make up your mind to only want the best don't agree for second best because jesus has already prepared the best for you. He is the best. So, anyway. So, he knew what was going to happen. His disciples, of course, did not know or understand. Thank God we do now. So, at that last supper, he took the bread and gave thanks. And that's what we are doing now. Father, we give you thanks. We give you praise. Thank you that we can sit down at your feet and hear you and talk to you and receive from you and be nourished by you. Thank you that even as we read today, it's not because everybody can, you know, share in the sunshine or in the rain that they are your children. No, they are those you, you call and you set apart. And we are privileged to be those ones. In Christ Jesus. So Father we say thank you. Thank you for sending your son to us. Thank you Lord Jesus for coming for us. Thank you for agreeing to pay that terrible price. To gain us back to the Father. And Holy Spirit thank you for revealing this truth to us. To the normal eye we are eating bread. But no the moment Jesus took the bread. And gave thanks and broke it and said to his disciples, this is my body. That's what it was. And right now, by the divine word of God, we declare this is the body of Christ that was given for us. Broken for us so that we can eat it and become whole in him. Amen. When supper was ended, he took the cup. Again, he gave thanks and prayers and gave the cup to his disciples and said, take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be shed for you and for all men so that sins may be forgiven. Forgiveness of sin is in one man alone. If you like, fight to pay for your sin, but you already know that you cannot do it. Forgiveness of sin is in Christ Jesus. He takes away your burden and he gives you his beauty, gives you his love, forgiveness, peace, and rest. So he gave up himself for us. His blood was shed that our sins may be forgiven. And he said, do this in memory of me.
and they did it. And now we do it even with a better understanding. So, Father, we say thank you. Thank you once more, Father. We can never thank you enough for this tremendous love, this boundless love, this unconditional love. People, people listen to this and say, oh, that's all too good to be true. Oh, that's fairy tale. Oh, that's for babies. <laughs> if only they have tested and seen. That's for the minds that are not renewed. Let them think what they like. We are your children and we love every moment in your presence. And we say, Lord, do what only you can do. For those who want to think about your love, for them it's all too good to be true. But we, we know your love. And truly, it is too good to be true. But because we've tested it, we know it's true. So we thank you, we honor you, we love you, and we commit all into your hands. We say, Lord, do with us as you want. When you say, come away with me, my Lord, we say, yes, Lord, I go anywhere with you. For your glory, for my benefit, and the benefit of all the saints, in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. The body of Christ. most precious blood of our Lord and Savior and King Jesus. Amen. You can never thank him enough. Keep thanking him. Be grateful. Show him your love. Love on him. Praise him for his goodness. Praise him for his mercies. He is already all over you in love. Ask him, Father, give me your kind of love so I can love you back. And thank you for loving me so unconditionally. Thank you that you didn't wait for me to be perfect. Before you loved me, you already loved me and died for me. That's why nothing can separate me from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Receive all our praises, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for the price you paid. Thank you, sweet Holy Spirit, that you are here. And a lot of people don't even know you or recognize you, but you are still here. Use us, Lord, to reach the people around us because Jesus says you shall receive power so that you will be my witnesses. Help us to be witnesses of Jesus, to go out there. And when people see us always smiling, when they ask us that we will be bold enough to tell them what you are seeing is Jesus. That's my identity. I am the living Jesus. Thank you, God the Father. Thank you, God the Son. Thank you, God, the Holy Spirit, for this identity. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. All right. A quick, quick um, housekeeping. So, I, I said last week, that uh, in July we will have a short break after the 30 days midnight prayer. So our Bible study starts again on Tuesday the 12th. Tuesday 12th of July. We have Bible study for the youth by 6 p.m. UK time for half an hour, 6 to 6.30, and then the adult or the you know, main Bible study from 7 to 8 again. 
from everything continuous as usual. Tuesday, 12th of July, we, we go back to the usual. Bible study Tuesday, Bible study Wednesday, and Friday. That may change, but I will announce in future. For now, just know that Tuesday we meet again. You know, so for those who've been diligent with the 30 days midnight prayer, this is your reward. Have a bit of rest, okay? And we'll see you again soon. More announcements to follow. Um, that's it. Continue to sow into what you belong to. That is the point. Now you know your identity or you've been reminded of your identity. You are part of a family that is, whose mandate is love, who operates in love. So show your love to the will of God, to the plan of God. You did not come to this family for no reason. God, you know, purposely put you here. So contribute to the, you know, to the growth of the family that you belong to. Contribute. It is your privilege to contribute to what you identify yourself with because it is in your favor to do that, okay? And um, I think that's all for now, all right? But, you know, stay in touch. We'll, 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 stay, we'll keep on um, updating if there's, there are changes, okay? So I want to love you and leave you and bless you in the name of Jesus. You are in the family of love. Love conquers all. Love is the greatest. Love is your mandate. Love is the key that God has given us in this family to go out there and show the world how we can do it differently. Okay? It's not what others are doing. You have your identity. Be royalty. Be the living Jesus. Be, be, be. It's the state of being. That's who you are. So enjoy it and be that in Jesus' name. Okay? I love you. Jesus loves you more. And I declare over you that the blood of Jesus is your refuge. Remember what we just read. He protects you. The light of the Holy Spirit is your shield. And the love of the Father. Is a blazing firewall of protection around you. Who can separate us from the love of God? Nothing. I don't care. He, he's, he's all over you. So remain in that love. You are protected in that love. Be bold in that love. And live in that love, for that love, through that love. Be the living Jesus. Amen? Amen. Love you. See you soon.